So growth rate. We are having the left side of what we are looking at. Uh, temperature versus composition, right? Composition or molar fraction, which is essentially your phase diagram. This is our phase boundary. Alpha single phase, below it is two phase region. We are only looking at a part of phase diagram. Our system composition is what? System composition x0, okay, and we quench from some higher temperature to some lower temperature. This is our so called equilibrium temperature. Let's neglect the so called volume strain effect. So, this would be our equilibrium temperature. And when we quench to here, any arbitrary temperature below the phase boundary. The delta x0, I would call it what? Super saturation, right? From here to here, this delta t, we would call it uh, so called undercooling, right? From here to here, that's our so called undercooling. And this is our equilibrium concentration. And what people find is the growth rate, similar to nucleation rate, the growth rate, the velocity of that interface mo motion, if it's diffusion controlled, also reaches maximum at a the blue one, intermediate temperature. Okay. Remember TEQ. That's our what? Equilibrium temperature. And then we have two terms together determines the growth rate. One is driven by d to the power of half. What is that? Diffusion coefficient. And naturally, the higher the temperature, the higher the diffusion coefficient. Even though it is square root, it's still the higher the temperature, the higher the this term. Make sense? So which means, okay, in terms of diffusion, the higher the temperature, the growth rate will be helped by diffusion term. But at the same time, at the same time, this data x term, x0, that is our what? Super saturation. And do you see that as we increase in temperature, our super saturation become what? Smaller and smaller. Make sense? As we increase go up in temperature, the supersaturation term becomes smaller and smaller. This term also determines the growth rate. So when it the whole thing would be enveloped between these two effects, there will be a compromise between supersaturation and diffusion. When I'm here, my growth rate is high or low. When I'm here, close to equilibrium temperature, my growth rate is high or low? Low because although what is fast? Diffusion is fast, but I don't have enough what? So called supersaturation. I don't have much driving force, another way to say. As a result, it doesn't grow very fast. On the other hand, when I'm here, what happens? Although I have very large what? So called supersaturation. I'm grossly supersaturated, oversaturated. I have a large driving force, but what is I do not have enough what? I do not have enough diffusion. Atoms are kind of frozen. As a result, the total growth is also very slow. So net net still this is our similar what shape? No shaped curve for velocity growth rate. Interestingly, similarly in this case, we also have this no shaped curve for growth rate, which means in order for fastest growth, I cannot be too high temperature, which I do not have enough driving force. On the other hand, I cannot have too low temperature because I do not have enough diffusion. Make sense?
So this is very important concept. It's kind of not very analytical, but it's very important concept as you deal with this in all types of material. When you handle any material quite often, you find that when you process the material, if you are too high temperature, you are limited by something. When you are too low temperature, you are limited because something else. I'll put another analogy for cooking. When you, let's say, you want to bake some bread at home, when you bake temperature is too high, what would happen? You cook it faster quite often, but you have the danger of what? Overcooking it, burning it. When you cook it at too low temperature, what happens? It takes forever. You don't have the danger of overcooking. So, which one you, where you want to be? You want to be somewhere in the middle. That's similar to this case. That will quite often for any material processing, that will be an optimized window for anything. Similar to cooking. Similar to all this material. Like adding fiber reinforcement to a material. If you add too little fiber, what happens to a polymer? You do not have enough strengthening effect. When you add too much fiber into the plastics, what would happen? not flexible enough that's one and also the material look ugly and very difficult to process because it it loses the polymer's flow capability make sense so for any material for any processing whether it's temperature whether it's additive whether it's same quite often we would same always have something like this no shaped curve between but here it's for temperature for this nucleation and for growth when you are too high temperature, you are limited by something. When you are too low temperature, you are limited by something else. The optimum is somewhere in between, and that's your so-called window of operation. And this goes for additives, for catalyst addition, for processing time, everything. Make sense? Quite often when you do some reaction, you do it for too short time. You don't have enough reaction. When you have too long time, you may have over coarsening or some other unwanted effect. In between is what you want. Make sense? This is the so-called kinetic aspect. Not very analytical, but you have to take this into your thinking. It's always you are looking for material processing, always looking for the, hopefully near the tip of the nose looking for this, you either purposefully try to be here or you purposely try to avoid here. Quite often you try to be here to be the optimal. Make sense? Okay, so um, the growth would lead to the overlapping of diffusion field because the growth, similar as the precipitation, will lead to the change in local composition. So let's initially have something like this. I'm drawing the composition versus location. Here, the sharp one indicates C, C beta means what? Between here, I have what phase? Beta phase. I have a between here, I have beta phase. And then between neighboring beta phase, I have the host of what? Between beta phase, I have the host of what phase? Alpha phase. Make sense? Between host, I have the alpha phase. And if we assume so-called the local equilibrium, right when alpha, which is here, and the beta touches, the alpha phase should have the word com composition. CE for equilibrium composition, which is here, which means the portion that is touching the beta have this composition. But far away from this interface, my alpha composition is getting closer to C what? Zero. What is C zero? Your initial system composition. Remember, when I just quench everything here, everything is what composition? C zero, right? So that's kind of like initially everything in between is C zero, but within the beta is C beta. 
at the, in, the other side of the interface is CE. And where would the diffusion go? It's from high concentration from C0 to low concentration. The B, the B element would flow from here to here. Make sense? And as the interface moves, the B would go migrate into here. And as the, the beta phase grow and grow, the neighboring so-called diffusion field would overlap. And as a result, this one would what? Go which way? Up or down? The concentration in between would go down because initially C0, eventually it has to be what? CE for equilibrium concentration. And when everything reaches equilibrium, do you see we have the concentration profile like this? CE, that's for alpha phase CE, and then step up into what? C beta, and then step down into CE again. That's the reason you typically would observe the so-called lamella structure, even for precipitation case the closely spaced lamella structure for precipitation case, okay?